Yo, uh, what's going on guys? It's your boy Cesar. There's a video here today because a brand new video hacked my very own cool Twitch panel. So I see you guys talking with my hands. Stop. Don't do that, okay? I, tr I do talk with my hands a lot, okay? But regardless, you guys see the video link. I went for like a crash course, okay? It's going to be basically how to design your uh, panels, how to get your dimensions, how to think differently, all the things and variations that you can do. So hopefully this video is like the video for you guys when it comes to panels. Um, but yeah, if this is not really kind of like me specifically doing one design of some, uh, panels, but if you guys want to check those videos, I have like two or three of them out. So you guys want to check right here in the panels, uh, that panel. Yep. You, you guys get it. Okay. I'm not, I'm not that good at YouTube. Okay. But regardless, last thing. Okay. Last plug. Seso HQ, Real Designer Hour merch finally went live this Friday. So if you guys are watching this video, you have two weeks to actually purchase it. It's a limited order, pre-order. And, uh, you guys can check it out. Check all the details of it. It's freaking amazing and you guys already smashed the expectation the first two days you guys already beat what i thought would be my max kind of you know sale so i'm happy i love you guys if you guys are watching this video right now thank you if you guys are going to purchase it after this video please let me know in the comments below or even twitter um with that being said enjoy the video i don't want to keep I, we're going for a short video i love you guys and uh that's it peace all right, guys. So I want to give you guys a full lay down on ideas so that when you're creating your panels, you end up knowing every option that actually exists. First, sizing. These are the three sizes I love to use when it comes to panels. First, 515 by 100, which offers a really cool sleek look compared to the actual default size that I normally would recommend. Then you have 650 by 150, which is a default size that offers a bit more space than the one previously. And then lastly, you have 650 by 400, which is a panel size you can see be used for things like PC specs, or maybe like a sponsor panel that has a product placement and like your rules. Each of these panel sizes give the designer, you in this case, right, a chance to actually further customize the size since it really isn't one final size that you need to use whatsoever. What I mean is if you were to take a 650 by 150 panel size, for example, let's just say the design that you have going on quite doesn't fit the scale of the panel you would like it to fit in. Just actually use the crop tool, which is C on your keyboard for the shortcut to then shrink or stretch the panel till it fits your needs. This will ensure you have the perfect size for maybe like a vertical tall logo that you just end up needing more space for. And it does happen a lot. So if you find yourself in that situation, just please go ahead and use the crop tool, make it a little bit bigger, make it a little smaller compared to what you actually need it for. Now, other than size, there's also examples to what is actually possible. Some of you guys might just know how to do the default and no further kind of customizing the framing other than doing this. Even though this is perfectly fine and it works absolutely, but you guys can actually play with a cool escaping the box concept just as easy as doing the default usual. Something like this where you might have objects or characters or some sort of random fractal kind of shape coming outside of the actual frame. And those types of panels are just made by using transparency when you're inside Photoshop. So take a panel design that you've might have created and you're just like, hey, I want to add a character or some sort of like something just because you feel like it, you know? All you'd end up doing is using your crop tool on the already designed panel and giving enough space for your object to sit in or around. Being sure as well that the size of your adjusted panel doesn't over exceed the space that the actual object really needs. So just make sure it fits tight around your new added elements. Also, when it comes to saving, saving transparent is also super easy as well. All you have to do is go to File, Export, Save for Web, and you make sure your preset is PNG 24 and the transparency box is actually checked. Then you click save and you guys are good to go. All of these quick examples are to basically help you guys think outside the box. I mean, quite, quite literally. And just to overall help you guys think differently when figuring out what you guys want to do with your actual panels when you get designing them. Now, including extending your panels to fit an actual element around it, you can also make really awesome designs by cutting out parts of your solid panel to make a play with transparency once again. These cutouts can be various types of slashes or some kind of flower cutout or literally anything. But for me, I like to separate a social media icon or a visual image on the left from the rest of the actual panel holding the information. One way that I like to do it is actually penciling out the top portion to be wider than it is towards the bottom. This will give the cut that you guys actually just pen to it out a cool dynamic to it. Then what you guys want to end up doing with your new pencil shape is right click, fill path, color, making sure you're on a new layer, and choose a color as a placeholder for that shape you'll be cutting out with. Whichever way you actually end up cutting out anything, the way you finally make it official is you want to make sure you group everything, including your text, your textures, whatever, all the stuff that's in your panel by pressing Ctrl G after selecting all the layers with using Ctrl and make a duplicate with Ctrl J with everything inside of it. You can then go ahead and actually save the original grouping just in case for later you want to change things up or make it different or try a different kind of idea. But with the duplicate, you want to merge it all together with Ctrl E. You can then go ahead and use the shape that you actually pen tooled and select the thumbnail of that layer and it'll grab that selection. Then all you'd have to do is go back to your merge panel layer and press delete. Then of course you guys will use PNG24 once again to save it. Then when you guys go ahead and put it below your Twitch stream, it would have a really cool slash variety to kind of help your panels feel more original. All right guys, last but not least, I want to give you guys my favorite way to set up the typography to Twitch panels. That way you have an idea what to do when you're doing it yourself. First, let's open up our 650 by 150 document size. 
Then near the bottom left, you want to change your foreground color to the nice color you would like to use. For me, I chose a black with a nice blue hue. And just so you guys know the quick shortcut to fill in your foreground color, it is Alt Backspace. Then I'll choose a nice font to write out my social media or panel info. So for me, that's Twitter. And the font that I also chose is also called Akira. And then I always like to follow through with a nice cool subtext right above the social focus. So for me, I put follow me since it correlates with Twitter. If it was something like YouTube, I'd probably put like subscribe to me or something like that. Then I'm going to go ahead and make a box that'll house my social media icon that I'll snag from Google. And just to make it quickly recognizable, I use the same color that that social media has. So for me, it's going to be that blue that Twitter uses. Then I'll go ahead and finish off by dropping in the social media logo, of course, making sure it's centered to the left box that we made it for. And honestly, ta-da, you pretty much have the basics down to how to make your own Twitch panels. It is literally that simple. Of course, this is a very bare bones idea of how to, of course, go through it. But at this point in time, I would like you to kind of think about how you want like, your, uh, excuse me, your panels to look like yourself. Whether if it's, of course, adding in some texture or maybe a really cool different font, you know, kind of figure out a vibe that you guys want to use. Of course, also use all the stuff that I said in the beginning of the video that also help you guys, of course, further it more to even give more kind of context. But I can't teach every single last one of you guys to make the exact panels that you would want, but I can give you guys the the basics and I also give you guys all the information that I have on panels that you guys of course use and love but as far as the basic goes this is quite literally it that's the end of the video we're here today guys I hope you guys enjoyed hopefully you learned something hopefully it wasn't crazy fast but also you guys learned at least you just hopefully you think differently that's what I'm going for for this video uh, I want to keep it short just the ending once again I love you guys I told you guys later since some HQ out you have to keep smiling stay positive and stay a freaking brother guys later much love and once again the merch will be the first thing in the description down below if you guys want to purchase it let me know if you guys do love you guys peace and enjoy your day